Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. Today I have some very interesting things to share with you. Throughout my near six years of travel, I've learned a lot of lessons and these nine are specific to the time that I have spent doing van life. So today I'm gonna tell you nine things that I've discovered while doing van life that might be handy to you. First off, let's talk about going to shower. Now I've shared on my channel before that I like to use Planet Fitness to go shower, but something that I learned along the way is not all Planet Fitnesses are the same. And in my discovery of this, I have kind of a funny story. So we were in Arizona and by we, I mean Riley and I were caravanning kind of together. And I think that we were in the Tucson area actually. And at this time, we were going to have our shower day, which means that we go to town, we take our shower bags, do the whole nine yards and really excited because it was shower day you always get hype about that but we realized that the closest shower to us was not the shower that we had been to previously so we tried out a new gym and in doing so it was a much different setup now one of the things that I've noticed at a lot of Planet Fitnesses are that you can go in and they have like a whole shower room where you close a curtain and you have your bench and all of your things and your toiletries right there. But there's another setup where they just have a shower and across from that you have to walk across to go and change. This was one of those. So we put our stuff in the little changing area. We walked across in our little towels and I went to go take off my towel and put it over the hook. And when I did, I leaned in to the glass, the glass that on my side looked like no one could see through it. What I didn't know was that everyone on the other side could see through it. This was my first lesson. Not all showers are opaque. <laughs> Fortunately for me, I traveled with a friend and she was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I could see everything. And I was like, oh no. Uh, unfortunately though, there were some other women in there that I did not know who also had to see everything. So my tip to you all in this particular situation is if you go to an unfamiliar gym, just put the towel over the door. Save everyone the visual of having to see you all naked. Just do it. It was one of the weirder things that I've discovered doing van life and uh, you know, I think it's also one of the most helpful. Now the second one that I've learned because I am a digital nomad so I have to be online a lot of times is that not all Starbucks actually have good Wi-Fi. I know that might be really confusing because you always hear people talking about, oh, I just go to Starbucks. But I have officed at over a hundred different Starbucks and um, I have some stories to tell you. When I was at Schooly Palooza, I went to Blythe and Blythe is a right across from Ehrenberg. Blythe is just like right inside of California. And whenever I went there the first time, I noticed that they were locked down. You couldn't go inside the lobby so I thought I'll just office from outside no big deal they always have good enough Wi-Fi nope 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 they had disabled the Wi-Fi so no one could work because the lobby was closed now that was kind of a weird scenario I'd gone back there since and it was good but I didn't know that they could do that I didn't know they were supposed to do that so that was kind of eye-opening but I've also noticed at a handful of Starbucks that the Wi-Fi leaves a lot to be desired. And uh, it might take me two minutes to load a video in some Starbucks and it may take me two days to load a video in others. The Wi-Fi is not always super consistent from place to place. So if you're in an area that has a Starbucks and they do not have good Wi-Fi, my suggestions are check to see if you have a Walmart Auto Center a McDonald's or a local library. And if you're really lucky, check for Panera's. Panera's usually have A1 quality Wi-Fi and also good food. Uh, so those are my backups always, but you know, the rumor of Starbucks is the place to go doesn't always necessarily mean that it's gonna be the good place to go. Mind you, I still love a good Starbucks though, so I'm still going to try that as my first option always. Number three. Not all campgrounds will allow you to stay 
in a van. Now, I have gone to a lot of campgrounds throughout my time, from the time that I was tent camping till the time that I am now in the van, and I've seen a lot of rules and regulations. There are some campgrounds that you have to have within certain year models of RVs to stay there because they're trying to make sure that people don't just like move in and then trash up the place. And so it's always important to check before you go. See if there are any restrictions. I pulled into one campground and I was told that because I was in a van, I did not qualify for an RV spot, but I wouldn't be able to stay in my van if I stayed in a tent spot. It was kind of weird, but it's not the norm. But just in case, if you are planning to stay at paid campsites, just look in advance. Number four, trash is everywhere. Literally everywhere that you go, there will be trash. And it is our job, even if we did not leave the trash, to try to leave it better than we found it. So always bring some extra gloves with you and also a trash bag and try to clean up the spaces that we're in. I know it sounds silly to have to clean up after somebody else, but unfortunately, if we don't clean up after them and they don't clean up after them, it just results in the land being closed. But there's literally trash everywhere. I've seen it at state parks. I've seen it in national parks. I've seen it on BLM. I've seen it in the forests. I have seen it on the coast. I have seen it in parking lots. I have seen it at just regular parks. I have seen it in places that you would never expect to see it. But the fact of the matter is it's there. And so if we try to improve our space, we are the responsible ones who are taking care of business and that will reflect accordingly. I would much rather pick up a few little things as I see them versus is going to the place the next time and being said, nope, you can't come here. Now this next one is a tip that I will give everyone every single time and it's based on things that I have learned. Not every person is going to believe the way that you do or think the same way that you do. Even though you may all be doing van life or RV life or living in schoolies or tent camping, whatever your method of travel is, it doesn't mean that just because you're all in the same place doing the same thing that you all think alike. So. I've always heard that you're not supposed to talk about religion or politics. This definitely applies to this particular community because you may meet somebody that is super cool and then you're gonna split some hairs real quick if you start talking about confrontational subjects that they may or may not agree with. So if you want to go to an event and just hang out and enjoy and meet new people and not make it too deep, then just go and have a good time. But the minute you start discussing those things, everything can take a turn for the worst and you never know who is actually camping across from you. And it can make it a really awkward, uncomfortable situation. Now by a show of hands in the comments section, how many people use Google? No, really, put an emoji if you use Google to find things on Google Maps. Now, I'm waiting. I know you're out there. Now the reason why I mentioned this is because Google is the topic of our next discovery that I personally had to find out the hard way. Google lies. I'm not saying it always lies, but sometimes it lies. And so finding a way to map your location with friends, I definitely recommend having more than one mapping service. I personally have an iPhone so I can use Apple Maps, but if you don't have an iPhone, having a paper map can be your best friend. I don't know how many times that I have gone to a campsite, especially in the Pacific Northwest, and it has led me to somewhere completely the opposite of where I wanted to go. In fact, last year, Riley and I had a really bad scenario where we were looking for a site on iOverlander, and in the midst of doing so, we ended up getting to, well, what I would call deliverance. It was not good. It looked like it was a place that they didn't want people to be there. There were signs everywhere saying, keep out, private property. And then even though we were on the public roadway, I started to feel super uncomfortable just based on where it was sending us. And then we realized Google had lied. And we were really far away from the actual campsite that we were supposed to be in. So as a result, after that, we would always map it on Apple and we would map it on Google and see if they're in agreement. Google's actually really good if you do a point to point map. So if you are able to sit down and actually put together a map before you leave out on your adventures, Google can be super amazing because you can get turn by turn directions and also really see the difference between point A and point B and all the things in between. So if you're doing something like that, 
I definitely say that that is a better solution than sometimes just relying on the navigation, especially if you're planning a big trip. Now this next one is gonna be a little controversial. Despite the fact that you might be camping in a place, that doesn't mean that somebody else can't camp literally right beside you. Now, one of the things that van life has taught me is that happens way more often than you would think. Just because you personally would not pull up right beside next to somebody doesn't mean that somebody else won't. Fact is, it's public land. They can be where they wanna be just like you can as long as it's in a designated area that allows camping. So if you're in the national forest and it's all wide open for anybody to camp anywhere, they can technically pull up right beside you. And you leaving something to mark your campsite does not mean that they cannot pull into your campsite and take over. Now they can't take your things obviously, but they can take the site. Does it feel good? No. Does it make you wanna be just like yay? Absolutely not. But the fact of the matter is, that's how the rules actually read. And I've spoken to several rangers in regards to this and they have said this too. It's the wide open free space. Anybody has the right to be there. They can park wherever they want to. If you don't like it, guess what? You can move. So as much as it might inconvenience us, that's kind of just kind of how it is. So we can't really do anything about it. We can vocalize our disdain, we can be angry, we can pout, we can cry, we can squawk, we can make videos. But in all reality, they have the right to be there just as much as we do. And as much as sometimes it's not fun and it's really inconvenient and it might make you uncomfortable, unfortunately, that's how it is. So the only solution to avoiding this is to get a paid campsite. In all reality, that's the only way that you can make sure that nobody takes your space or encroaches upon your immediate space. Now this next one is one that uh, I learned the hard way. So take my advice please, because you don't ever wanna be in this situation. Glass does not break, it shatters. A while back, whenever I first started van life, I had this small jar of honey. And I was like, oh, I like this. I wanna take this with me. And I didn't put it in another container. That was a mistake. See what happened was, it was in my little food bin and it whacked up against something also in my food bin and I heard this pop sound and it was kind of scary but I thought oh okay I'll check it out whenever I stop because I knew it wasn't related to the exterior of the van. What I learned was nothing short of a disaster. Glass again does not break it shatters and with that as it shattered and sent shards all into my food bin it also exploded honey everywhere. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with how sticky honey can be, especially if it's left unchecked for just a little while, but that was the grossest, hardest to clean up mess I've ever in my entire life encountered in my van. My word to the wise is just don't put glass in your van because it's not fun. Please, please use my story as your word of warning. Don't be me. Now this last one is the one that I think throws people off a lot, especially if they've only watched YouTube videos. Not every night are you going to camp in the beautiful scenic campgrounds. That doesn't mean there won't be your fair share of being able to recreate in those areas and in some cases actually stay there. But if your goal is to back up to the ocean every single night or back up to a lake every single night, the reality is in a lot of places that's just not possible. I hate to say this, but there are several people who have perceived the vision of dreaming the van dream as these beautiful aesthetic photos of places that they may or may not actually be staying the night. Now, not saying you won't find some of those. For example, we camped right off of the coast of Oregon several times last year. However, not every night was that a possibility for us to just pull up, open up our back doors, and wow, there's the ocean that I can just walk out onto and just have the most scenic aesthetic moment. What is realistic are nice campgrounds in the forest and beautiful places that might not necessarily always be next to a body of water, a few truck stops here and there, and maybe even a Walmart parking lot or two. Those are real expectations. And it's super important for you to understand that while you can stay remote in a lot of places, sometimes that vision of van life that you see under hashtag van life 
is just not exactly achievable every night. Again, I, I will say I have had quite a few of those nights though where it's just been perfect. The sunset's been amazing. You see the gorgeous views on top of a mountain with the rolling fog. It's just awesome. But you also have to be flexible because when you can't find those, you can't get all bent out of shape and just think that, well, this isn't any good. I say all this to say that I saw one particular channel a while back who completely discounted the entire act of van life as a result of him only watching aesthetic channels and then getting mad because it wasn't aesthetic every single day of his existence. Realistically, part of his disdain came from the fact that his travel journey was different than theirs. He was staying in different areas. He had also planned on what he wanted to do differently than they had. If you're a person who wants to do a lot of things in the city, aesthetic is gonna be hard. If you're a person who loves the desert and you don't go to the mountains or the forest, or even if you do go to the mountains, your mountains are gonna look a little different than they would if you're in Colorado. If you're a person who is craving the ocean views and you pull up to some really busy section of California, you're not gonna be able to stay there. It really comes down to being realistic with your expectations and also your goals, and then kind of researching a little bit if that is your goal. Sure, we all have a goal of finding finding something beautiful, but beauty is also subjective to the individual person. So my version of aesthetic and your version of aesthetic might even be different. I could stay on a bluff at like Lake Meredith here in Texas and have beautiful water views for miles and miles. But at the same time, I don't have the same waterfront views that you might have in Oregon, Washington, California. It's a different vibe. So in all reality, I think the biggest part that I learned with this is managing expectations, planning ahead just a little bit, and then also to not compare myself to others in the goals that I have for what I want to do in way of where I want to stay. So instead of saying, oh, this person found this, so this is gonna be my journey, see if your journey actually aligns with what their journey even is, because it may or may not be. And if it's not, then your expectation and your reality of travel might not end up being that same journey. I hope these things are all helpful to you. These are all my personal thoughts of what I've kind of learned throughout time, the things that I've seen, and also the little tips that I have. Don't get discouraged if you get out of the road and you experience some hiccups along the way. We all have. That is perfectly a normal part of the journey. But do remember this. We're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. And your van journey is going to be absolutely awesome. But I hope these nine tips help it be a little bit better. Till next time, guys. Bye.